For RCR Wireless News, I'm Sean Kinney, and I'm here with Jim Nolan in InterDigital's booth at Mobile World Congress to learn a little bit about your vision for the Internet of Things. The discourse at the show so far has just painted a picture of millions of various sensors and devices all seamlessly integrated. What are some of the interoperability challenges associated with that vision? Sean, great, great question, because when you, when you see all of the things in the show and it, you, it purports that everything is seamlessly integrated and all interoperable, the reality is a little bit different. The, the reality is, is that most solutions are built as vertical solutions and they're very specific and tailored. There, there are quite a few platforms out there. There's actually quite a breadth of platforms, either standards-based or non-standards-based. So there's not a good deal of interoperability between different platforms and different solutions. Uh, there's some great vertical solutions, but in terms of actual broader, broader platforms that can, that can actually scale and are interoperable, it's actually a little bit more limited. And so, in addition to interoperability, what are some of the other big challenges that IoT needs to overcome? Well, it's, it's, it's scalability, the ability to scale, because if you build, you build solutions for a couple of thousand, 50,000, 100,000, ultimately you, need, you have data and solutions that have to scale to millions and tens of millions of solutions. So, building solutions that are robust enough that can handle that data, that, that's one challenge. The other challenge is, is, is actually how to monetize that. So there's, there's value in the connectivity and there's a value in the solutions that it provides for customers. But at the end of the day, the, 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 there has to be a revenue, a return on investment for everyone in the ecosystem. So right now we're in really early days where, where most of the revenue is due to connectivity and some simple uh, managing of events, meters, some sim simpler things, some industrial control, home automation, a lot of consumer electronic stuff that's great, people people like, but a lot of that's still very isolated. You're really not getting the full benefit of all of that data from either if you're an enterprise, as a business, as a small, medium business, you're not getting the benefit of that data. Or if you're a larger company, you're not yet getting the benefit of aggregating all that data and what analytics can you do to actually capture value from that data. Those, those are things where you really start to unlock value from the Internet of Things. And you know, Jim, you mentioned standards as they relate to IoT. How important is the role of standardization in the Internet of Things? Uh, from my perspective, very, very important. I think uh, it's it not the same as cellular where you have a single or just several standards. We think IoT, because it has multiple verticals, will have multiple standards. And it may even have multiple standards within each vertical. And ultimately, it is web-based technology. So just as, as the web has multiple protocols and multiple standards, IoT as well, will as well. But from my perspective, the standards are important to truly get interoperability. And, and what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is that, that uh, customers, enterprises, uh, industrial, connected cars can use different sensors or different software platforms and they can interoperate. Today, what you see is what I'll call is more vertical solutions where there's very little interoperability. When you build this solution with a certain set of sensors and a certain application, the customer tends to get locked in. So if, if, if as the technology advances and new improvements come in, the, the web technology improves tremendously, those first customers have gotten locked into solutions that are probably more costly and don't scale as well. So that's where I think standards are very important to, to create that broad, scalable, interoperable platform that's, that's the, the lowest cost. And Jim, so as we, as we watch the IoT take shape, do you see any particular geographic regions leading the way? Yeah, so the, it, it, that, that's interesting. There's actually different regions are leading in different ways. So, so I'll give you a couple examples. So in Europe, you see a lot of uh, wide area, low, pow low power wide area networks for, used for metering. And that, the, it's really the deployments are, have been very strong in, in, in Europe. And then in places like Northeast Asia, Korea, and Japan, you're seeing other solutions adopted, and you're actually seeing a little bit more standards adoption there. One M to M, one standard we've worked on, it's been a little bit more adoption there. U.S., you see a little more consumer electronics where it's more ap application-based. You know, you're paying for the end device and you get an application done quite well. And then I think you're seeing in various regions, in, in Asia, North America, and Europe, uh, advances in terms of industrial controls, automation, enterprise, but still, still early days in terms of deployment in those areas. But I'd say that's a little more broad. But then in, in other types of verticals, it's, it's been stronger in one region rather than another. 
And you mentioned the 1MDM standard. Uh, what other type of work is InterDigital doing specific to IoT? Yeah, so we've, we've built uh, the, the 1MDM standard, rel and you know, a 1M power platform, it, it's 1MDM compliant. But what we've done is we've also adapted that to, to some solutions. So we've adapted that for a solution in the UK called One, uh, One Transport. And what that is is for several uh, county governments around London, we're providing a solution that allows them to take a whole bunch of legacy solutions where they, they couldn't actually take all the data from the different applications and use it. So we're operating as almost a data exchange where we're exposing all that data to applications so that you can build, you can, you can be able to see what, what's happening with emergency vehicles, train information, car information, and you can then take all of that and, and build super applications that can, can, people can use different applications on the same data set that can maybe find someone's shortest path into work, draw, steer you directly to the car park that's available with an open spot. And we think that that's, that's a model where, in, in this case, where the government agencies own the data and they can make the data available and they can also get some revenue share on that data and then get a return on investment themselves. One of the issues in terms of IoT rollout is, is, is how, how do people make money or pay for or recoup that investment. So we see this as a way to enable governments to use data they already have build applications that their customers can use, the customers, the, the citizens can use, and also get a return on investment on their investments on these automated systems. So that's one. The other one is we, we've built a system called webofthings.io. And what this does, think about it as, as, a, as a, this, this glue that ties together all different solutions. So what it does, we talked earlier about different standards, it allows you to support Multiple, multiple types of connectivity or platforms. So I could build a solution for an enterprise that supports Nest, Thread, or Weave as a standard there, or it supports all join, or now we're moving from all join to IOTivity, it can support that, and it supports 1M to M, and then what it does is it also connects other third-party value-added services, different database providers, different analytics providers, all different services that you can then build together into an application and that gets, that gets an, uh, a new application pretty much pre-integrated to 80 to 90% before somebody goes to build an application. So applications then are less bespoke and they can be built much faster, again, re reducing the cost to develop a new application and improving the return on investment for the businesses and enterprise that are building, building those applications. So IoT and 5G are decidedly the dominant themes here in Barcelona. Tell us a little bit about the transformative power that is created when you combine these two things. Oh, yeah, yeah and, and, and one thing I didn't mention in standards, I'll just back to this, is there is a tremendous amount of work happening within 5G that's related to IoT. So if you look at 5G, the vision is really connecting all things and actually building wireless standards that are more appropriate for, for sensors so that they, they can either handle large amount of streaming data, or in most cases, it's handle a very small amount of data at a very low power perspective. So 5G will build a wireless, air, a wireless system that can handle multiple different types of IoT uh, deployments. Where today, you have different air interfaces for different types of applications. You have ones for indoor, Zigbee, Z-Wave, Bluetooth, and then you have your LoRa, Sigfox, those ones for long distance. What, what you see in 5G is, is the development of new air interfaces that actually handle those multiple types of deployments, whether they're long range, low power, near field, or in home, or, or uh, you know, applications for, for small businesses. But in, in this case, it's, it's an air interface or new technologies that actually support all those different applications under one or a group of standards. Well, Jim, I really appreciate you taking the time to tell us more about InterDigital's vision for IoT. Well, thank you, Sean. Appreciate it.